is Alma Singer. When I was born, my mother named me after every girl in a book my father gave her called The History of Love. She named my brother Emmanuel Jame after the Jewish historian Emmanuel Rinkelblum, who buried milk cans filled with testimony in the Warsaw Ghetto, and the Jewish cellist Emmanuel Feuermann, who was one of the great musical prodigies of the 20th century and also the Jewish writer of genius, Isaac Emanuelovic Babo, and her uncle, James, who was a joker, a real clown, made everyone laugh like crazy, and who died by the Nazis. But my brother refused to answer to it. When people asked him his name, he made something up. He went through 15 or 20 names. For a month, he referred to himself in the third person as Mr. Fruit. On his sixth birthday, he took a running leap out of a second floor window and tried to fly. He broke his arm and got a permanent scar on his forehead, but from then on, nobody ever called him anything but bird. Two, what I am not. My brother and I used to play a game. I'd point to a chair. This is not a chair, I'd say. Bird would point to the table. This is not a table. This is not a wall, I'd say. This is not a ceiling. We'd go on like that. It is not raining out. My shoe is not untied. Bird would yell. I'd point to my elbow. This is not a scrape. Bird would lift his knee. This is also not a scrape. This is not a kettle. Not a cup. Not a spoon. Not dirty dishes. We denied whole rooms. Years. Weathers. Once, at the peak of our shouting, Bird took a deep breath. At the top of his lungs, he shrieked, I have not been unhappy my whole life. But you're only seven, I said. Three, my brother believes in God. When he was nine and a half, he found a little red volume called The Book of Jewish Thoughts, inscribed to our father, David Singer, on the occasion of his bar mitzvah. In it, Jewish thoughts are gathered under subheadings such as Every Israelite holds the honor of his entire people in his hands under the Romanovs and immortality. Soon after he found it, Bert started to wear a black velvet kippah around everywhere, not caring that it didn't fit right and puffed up in the back, giving him a dopey look. He also got in the habit of following Mr. Goldstein, the janitor at Hebrew school, who mumbled in three languages and whose hands left behind more dust than they cleaned away. There were rumors that Mr. Goldstein slept only an hour a night in the basement of the shoal. Then in a labor camp in Siberia, that his heart was weak, that a loud noise could kill him, that snow made him cry, Bird was drawn to him. He followed him around after Hebrew school while Mr. Goldstein vacuumed between the rows of seats, cleaned the toilets, and rubbed curses off the blackboard. It was Mr. Goldstein's job to take out of circulation the old sitars that were torn or ripped. At one afternoon, with two crows as big as dogs watching from the trees, he pushed a wheelbarrow full of them out behind the synagogue, bumping over rocks and tree roots, dug a hole, said a prayer, and buried them. Can't just throw them away, he told Bird. Not if it has on it God's name. Has to be buried properly. The next week, Bird started to write the four Hebrew letters of the name. No one is allowed to pronounce, and no one is allowed to throw away on the pages of his homework. A few days later, I opened the hamper and found it written in permanent marker on the label of his underwear. He wrote it in chalk across our front door, scribbled it across his glass photograph on the bathroom wall, and, before it came to an end, carved it in with my Swiss army knife as high as he could reach on the tree in front of our house. Every morning he wakes early to Davin outside. 
outside and always kept a sleeping bag and two gallons of water in his truck and could start a fire with a piece of flint if he had to. He picked my mother up on Friday nights while the other kibbutzniks lay on blankets under a giant movie screen on the grass, petting dogs and getting high. He drove her to the Dead Sea where they floated strangely. Five. The Dead Sea is the lowest place on earth. Six. No two people looked less alike than my mother and father. <laughs> when my mother's body turned brown and my father laughed and said she was getting to look more like him every day, it was a joke because where he was six foot three with bright green eyes and black hair, my mother is pale and so small that even now, at 41, if you saw her from across the street, you could mistake her for a girl. Bird is small and fair like her, and I am tall like my father. I am also black-haired, cap-toothed, skinny in a bad way, and fifteen. Seven. There is a photograph of my mother that no one has ever seen. In the fall, my mother went back to England to start university. Her pockets were full of sand from the lowest place on earth. She weighed one hundred and four pounds. There's a story she sometimes tells about the train ride from Paddington Station to Oxford when she met a photographer who was almost completely blind. He wore dark sunglasses and said he damaged his retinas a decade ago on a trip to Antarctica. His suit was perfectly pressed and he held his camera in his lap. He said he saw the world differently now and it wasn't necessarily bad. He asked if he could take a picture of her. When he raised up the lens and looked through it, my mother asked what he saw. The same thing I always see, he said, which is a blur, he said. Then why do you do it? she asked. In case my eyes ever heal, he said. So I'll know what I've been looking at. In my mother's lap, there was a brown paper bag with a chopped liver sandwich my grandmother had made for her. She offered the sandwich to the almost completely blind photographer. Aren't you hungry? he asked. She told him that she was, but that she'd never told her mother that she ate a chopped liver, and eventually it became too late to tell her having said nothing for years. The train pulled into Oxford Station, and my mother got off, leaving behind her a trail of sand. I know there is a moral to this story, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> I'm gonna stop for now. 
has just been the problem.